Hi everyone, Stepan here. I'm going to start covering games from Pula Open, which is a tournament uh, that finished about 10 days ago, I'm going to say. And uh, this is round one. I faced a lower rated opponent. As is often the case in open tournaments, you either play someone much higher or much lower rated than you. In this case, my opponent is 1400. And uh, this game is a really good example of why, <coughs> even, even if you don't know any theory, you should try to follow the basic chess principles. So this may be useful to uh, some of you who are uh, beginners or or just starting to to learn opening theory. Okay, uh, it was a weird game. Uh, okay, I, I started with d4. Uh, my opponent played c6 and I went into the Karo Khan with e4. Now, my opponent didn't play d5. He played d6, which is okay. And this often goes into Philidor type of positions, sometimes into Pirt's territory with, with g6 later on. But the basic idea is uh, often to, to play b5 and expand on the queen side uh, in conjunction with this bishop that could be dangerous. So I started knight f3, he played queen c7, which according to, to the engines is a bad move, but it's actually okay because it supports e5. And here there are a couple of ways to play. I actually know this position because I was preparing for an opponent who played something similar about two years ago. And usually here you either play c4, uh, going into a type of King's Indian actually after after uh, g6, bishop g7 and e5. Or you can play h3 uh, to restrict this bishop for coming to g4. But I played a normal developing move which... Uh, doesn't commit my position in any way. I played knight c3. And this invites b5, uh, which is not that good for black in my opinion, because uh, if I can develop my bishop and then retreat this knight to e2, then my knight has great attacking potential in the center. Uh, especially if e5 is played, then the f5 square becomes weaker, so knight e2, knight g3, knight f5 is a pattern. So this is why I played knight c3. It's not the most active move, but it develops a piece. Okay, knight d7 again, going for, for e5. And here I played bishop c4, again inviting b5. Now if b5 is played, then bishop to d3, and if b4, knight e2. And it may seem like black has a ton of space on the queen side, but after something like e5 and b3, this bishop is coming to b2, there will be a ton of pressure on e5, and I'm going to castle kingside quickly and have a very, very pleasant position. But my opponent played h6. Now, h6 is... Uh, it's not that it doesn't do anything, but it almost doesn't do anything. It prevents my pieces from coming to g5, which I, I don't want to go to g5 in any case. So I played bishop e3. Again, b5, same pattern, same thing applies. Uh, he played g6. Okay, uh, again, I, I played queen to d2, uh, just developing my pieces, connecting my rooks. I still haven't decided where I was going to castle. Uh, still b5, same idea. Bishop d3, knight e2. And after bishop to g7, uh, now I decided to prevent b5, because if he ever plays e5 in this case, with the bishop already on g7, then d6 is going to be a permanent weakness. In fact, uh, after a4, which prevents b5, he cannot play e5. It simply loses a pawn, and it loses a pawn very quickly. Uh, unless he wants to recapture with the d pawn, in which case all of my pieces are perfectly placed, and I have, a, have an extremely good Pirtz or modern position with a huge lead in development, and it's really unclear where this bishop is going because he's yet to move both of his knights. Okay, so e5. He did play it, uh, and I thought this just loses the game. Uh, that's not far from the truth. Uh, the engine says plus two and a half for white, but that's basically because of the lead in development, so I, I took. And now d5, of course, is the best move. Uh, it's not good, but it's the best move. Uh, he played knight e5, and knight e5 is 
now for humans this really should be winning for for white uh, I played knight takes e5 and again d takes e5 should be the best move but that leaves him with a very very poor bishop uh, if he takes with the with the d pawn then I simply play h3 and this one doesn't have a useful square if he's going to move his queen away to prevent bishop e6 bishop e6 f6 then he loses even more time I can just castle queenside but he took with the bishop and uh, in this position there are two ways to play uh, this is where I had my first think in the game there are two three candidates mo candidate moves for for me I can play f4 uh, winning uh, the, the pawn straight away uh, because if, if the bishop goes to f6 then I don't know, with the idea of if castles or rook d1, bishop e7, then that's extremely passive. I think that's even worse than losing a pawn, at least according to the engine. Uh, so I think in this position after f4, black should play bishop to g7 and now castles wins the pawn. Uh, the other way to play, which I chose, was rook to d1, which prepares f4. And the only problem with this is, is bishop to g4 but I can just play f3, chase the bishop away and then play f4 or I can play f4 straight away where he cannot really grab my rook uh, because if if takes and here and saves the bishop then then this is an exchange sacrifice that's going to be winning very very quickly uh, but I chose f3 which is safer, no need to complicate this position uh, if the bishop goes to d7 then f4 and, and queen d6. Uh, the bishop went to e6, which is an exchange I don't mind at all, weakening these two pawns as well. And now f4. Uh, now I just win a pawn. Uh, he could take on c3, but that's with a tempo on the rook. Uh, so, so bishop to g7, queen d6. We exchanged, I'm pawn up. Uh, he took on c3. Uh, which slightly ruins my pawn structure but puts pressure on the b-pawn and with my pawn on a4 it's not easy to liquidate the b-pawn it's not easy to defend if the if the b-pawn ever go, goes to b6 then c6 is weak so this is it's just game over i'm a pawn up and i have a much better position uh, and here he, he played rook d8 which, which loses one of these two pawns I can choose which one I want to take uh, I didn't really want to go for the e6 pawn uh, even though that probably is a better idea uh, I can defend my rook with with f5 or I can play rook e5 uh, but I, I chose to take on d8 and, and take on a7 which seemed fine to me I, I mean bo both are winning it's just a pleasant choice uh, knight f6, bishop d4, preventing knight e4, pinning the knight to the rook. Uh, king e7, the knight is still pinned, so king e2. No need to castle, I need my king in the center. And here he played rook a8, and, and I made a huge mistake, which, as soon as I played this move, I knew that I'd made a mistake. Uh, but, but my position is still winning, and I have to admit that I didn't, didn't really spend too much time thinking about the position I just played. Uh, I finished the game with almost as much time as I started with, so I really didn't spend any time. Uh, I should have, because later on I gave my opponent uh, a possibility to get an almost equal position. The correct move here is rook b1, and there is no way to defend the b7 pawn. Uh, I mean, what are the options? Uh, he cannot take the pawn on a4 because I just take and he loses the knight. Uh, or he has to play knight d7, which I, I don't know. Both are pretty bad. Uh, so he cannot do that. If he plays rook a7, I can just take it. Uh, if he plays knight d7, then I just play rook b7 uh, and we get the same position. And if he plays knight e4, uh, then I play rook b7 check. Uh, let's say king d6, bishop e5 king c5 he's probably gonna get mated somehow or I just win the knight uh, I think winning the knight is easier 
so I, I can just play king e3. Uh, well, okay, he can take on a4. But, yeah, you get the idea, this is a huge advantage. Instead I took on f6, which seemed simpler, but it's, it's not. After king f6, I now have to play rook a1, <coughs> and he actually has a chance to gain a lot of play with, with rook a5. My rook is passive, way more passive than his, and the engine only gives this as plus one and a half, plus two, which is only two pawns up. I am two pawns up, but it should have been much clearer. Instead, he played king e7, which uh, now again the position is overwhelming. Uh, king e3, rook a5 now, it, it's not the same thing because the king is not on f6 and rook b1 comes with tempo, because if rook a4, rook b7 is check. So he has to go passive with rook a7. And now I started advancing my pawns, which maybe is not the best idea, but it's okay. The idea is to create a passed pawn on, on f5. King d6, rook d1 check, king c7 and, and rook d4. Defends my pawn laterally, my rook is more active here. Now that the b7 pawn is defended. I had an immediate win, uh, which I saw when I was preparing the video. Uh, it's just f5 and, and that's it. Ef5, gf5, gf5, ef5. And if he takes on a4, I just push my pawn. Uh, he isn't in time to, to defend. If he tries to go back, then I just support my pawn with the king. His king is completely cut off by, by two, uh, two files. But rook d4 is still okay. Rook a5. Uh, now here I should have played e5, I think. And... After rook c5, king d3, rook a5, I think this exchange is good for me because rook a4 I can just go c4 and then I'm going to start picking up all the pawns. But I played h4, which is imprecise. I played it quickly, I just pushed my pawns. Uh, rook c5, king d3 defending, and e5, which is a move I'd expected and it's a good move because it breaks up my pawns, but it gives me a passed e pawn. And with his king cut off, uh, it's 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 an easy position to play with white. Two pawns up and the best pawn where his king is cut off. So e5 was his best try, I think, but it, it it's not enough. Okay, rook e5. I played rook b4. Uh, the idea is not to put pressure on b7, but to get my rook around here or here. Uh, I wanted to get it to d1 and then start pushing my pawn. He played rook e7, the idea is rook f7 and, and rook f4, king e3, uh, rook f7, rook b1, g5, giving himself a square on, on f4, hg5, hg5, and here I actually made a mistake. This was the final sequence in the game, and I thought I'd calculated everything correctly. I didn't. I, I played rook d1, allowing him to, to play rook f4. Of course, if I defend passively, then I get nothing, his king comes closer. I'm still two pawns up, but it's not easy to win. But I played e5, and I thought that taking the g-pawn is just bad, uh, but, but it's actually not. I, I also thought, same as he did, we both misjudged this position completely, that taking on a4 should be better, but I, I knew that it still loses. He took on a4 and, and resigned a few moves later. I'm going to show you how the game ended first. So he took on, on a4, I played e6. His king is cut off, so, so rook a8. And now rook e4. Uh, he played rook e8, I played king e5. He played rook f8, I played e7, rook e8. And here he resigned, obviously. I, I'm just going to win a rook. Uh, but after e5, taking on g4 is actually very, very close to a draw. Now. I wasn't going to play e5, uh, excuse me, e6. I knew that e6 should be a draw after, after rook a4, because now he is in time to get back. Uh, and I don't know, if I push e7, then he just wins my pawn. And the problem is that I cannot advance uh, to e4, and he has a passed pawn here. So against rook g4, I prepared rook d4, and I thought that there is just no defense to this it just seemed completely winning but rook h4 actually draws the game with perfect play white should still be like plus one i'm a pawn up 
but it's not easy to win. Of course, if I take the rook, then it's it's definitely a draw. But I don't know what else to do. Uh, the engine says a5, which doesn't make too much sense. That should be the only move to play for an advantage. If I go e6, then I think he just takes and takes and plays here. I don't see how I can win this game. King f3 takes here, here. This should be a draw. So I actually misplayed the position completely uh, because I didn't see that in this position after rook g4, rook d4, he has rook h4, which is not a hard move to see. But yeah, fortunately for me, uh, my opponent took on a4, so it was easy. It's one of those positions that you win without thinking, and I actually didn't even look at the game before I started preparing this video. And then I realized that I, I made a huge blunder. Obviously, any strong player would have drawn that position, which is incredible. But yeah, I did manage to win. Uh, as I said, I didn't spend any time. Uh, that's something I have to change. Even in winning positions against much lower rated players, you have to think throughout the game because you could end up in trouble. If I drew this game, I, I would have been very, very upset. And maybe I did deserve to draw it because I had a completely winning position and just played automatically. But yeah, the lesson is develop your pieces. Don't, don't let your opponent get a position like this this is just tremendous i mean all of my pieces are great his opening was just bad it's just a bad opening so yeah uh, even if you don't know theory try to play normal moves not h6 g6 d6 c6 and e5 okay uh, thank you for watching see you tomorrow uh, with a game against the croatian women's champion uh, stay tuned for more chess bye bye